everyone to our 2022 webinar series. Um, we're so excited that you're here and this um, is our first one, uh, obviously of the year, but of this series that we're putting together. So um, thank you to Andre for being the brave first guest host or guest presenter. But um, as you can probably tell, we're working out some of the logistical issues and uh, technical stuff. So. Um, first and foremost, I should introduce myself. I'm Megan Lohman. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Plan Forward. Um, for those of you who may not know, we are a dental membership software company and we work with dental practices um, in 40 states across the country. Um, so what is this series? Um, you know, we talk a lot about membership plans, but certainly we hear from not only our clients, but just people in the industry who want to know about all sorts of stuff. And our amazing team uh, has a wonderful network of all of these different um, experts in different topics in dentistry. So we thought what better way to provide um, not only education, but hopefully some entertainment um, and just food for thought to our community. So. Um, that being said, that is what the intention is for our 2022 webinar series. It is not plan forward focused. It is more, um, you know, just to be a place for anyone, customers or not, uh, to come and to learn and to find out new information. So if you have any suggestions on topics or presenters or anything uh, that you'd like to see, we would love to know about that. Uh, at the end, you'll see our upcoming events, so you can see the topics and the presenters we have on deck. Um, but we're really excited to kick this off, and we look forward to a strong series ahead. A few housekeeping items. Um, as Andre mentioned, maybe you heard, but if you could, please keep your microphone muted um, and your camera off so that uh, the quality of the, the screen share or Andre's presentation um, is good. That would be great. Um, Secondly, don't worry about taking feverish notes. Um, you're obviously welcome to, but you will receive the recording of this webinar along with um, an amazing handout that Andre has created for our topic on membership plans with EagleSoft. So that will be in your inbox if you registered. Um, also, if you have friends that maybe didn't register but want some information on this, you can go to our website planforward.io forward slash EagleSoft, and these resources uh, will be available for you. And last but not least, please, please, please ask questions. Um, we all know that webinars can be super boring when we just sit here and listen to one person talk. So the more interactive you can be, um, be brave, put your questions in there. We have this amazing expert who knows so much about EagleSoft that, um, you know, bring any questions and we will do our best to answer all of them. Um, so today, obviously, we are talking about EagleSoft. So I personally love starting with EagleSoft because that's the platform I used when I was working in the dental practice, so I'm most familiar with it. But um, some of the things that Andre is gonna talk about, you know, even if you aren't an EagleSoft user, they really could um, transfer over to the other practice management softwares. Um, we also have some of those other softwares on deck for later in the year. Um, but the one thing I do know is that the EagleSoft tech support and, you know, their, their formal lines that you can call in as a customer, they're great, but they are there as tech support. They are tech people and they may or may not have actually worked in a dental practice or are familiar with the actual inner workings of the day-to-day -day in the dental practice. So this community and this group that Andre has created is really um, for those of us and those of you actually sitting in the desk, behind the desk, running the office day to day. Um, the, another big thing that EagleSoft was not built for was running membership plans. Um, so Andre is going to give us some tips and tricks on how to manage your membership plan within EagleSoft. Um, and, you know, until all of us are integrated. I mean, obviously, that's where we all want to go. Not there yet, um, but we know that everything goes through EagleSoft. That is your one source of truth. Um, last but not least, um, if you don't know about other resources other than um, the EagleSoft tech support, um, Andre has, it's right here on the screen. He has his website at thecrewprocess.com, but maybe more interesting for today is his 
Facebook group. And on that note, um, Andre, we do want to congratulate you. <laughs> we were kind of talking about this right before we began, but we somebody did find this. Um, this was just recently posted, but this group surpassed 13,000 members. So if there is a testament to how valuable the community is that Andre has built, the content, and just the resources available in this group, um, this is a testament to that. So Andre, congratulations on all you've done and the impact that you're making for, for the community. Um, so, so I do want to introduce uh, our guest here before I turn it over. Um, Andre Sherdan is an inspirational and motivational speaker. He's an executive coach and certified trainer. Um, he's spoken for many different organizations, um, state, local, and national meetings, as well as you know, big organizations like ADOM, uh, corporate entities like Patterson, uh, and Care Credit. So you know, very well respected in in the industry. Um, since 1989, he's worked with thousands of practices, helping to create systems, um, offer treatment planning, staff training, goal attainment, uh, internal and external marketing, and also computer systems integration. So very well versed um, in how to support the internal workings of a dental practice. Um, he created this EagleSoft Field Guide Facebook page so that EagleSoft users can really get more out of the practice management system. Um, like we mentioned, currently have over 13,000 motivated EagleSoft users, um, better known as fielders. You can tell us a little bit more about that, Andre. Um, so with that, um, I would love to turn it over to you, Andre, and just very, very much appreciate you being here and your willingness to share all of your knowledge um, with this community. Well, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Janelle. And thank you, Priscilla. You know, it's it's been a, a fun ride. I mean, I started the EagleSoft Field Guide as a way for me to take some time off. <laughs> when I retired from Patterson, my goal was to uh, step away from the day-to-day -day, uh, hands-on help for offices. And uh, I had about... 30 offices who called me and said, hey, we need a resource when you're gone to be able to get in touch with you. Uh, or can we just get your phone number? And I said, hey, let me start this page. I'll put some information up there. So the typical questions you ask will automatically be there and you won't have to call me. <laughs> and now, you know, how many years later, 13,000 people in the group, and I probably still answer about 200 questions a day. Um, on EagleSoft related things. And, you know, it's funny because EagleSoft is our practice management software, but so much of what I see in offices is, is EagleSoft is this sort of recipe box where the information's there, but you don't really use it until your Thanksgiving comes along. You know, there's some problem that comes up and you have to solve yeah. it. And it needs to be a practice management tool. It needs to manage the practice instead of just being data in a box someplace. So that's what I try to do on a daily basis to try to help people with managing the flow of information in the practice. And a lot of it, you know, in the last few years, as patients, uh, people started to move away from insurances and things like that, are things like this, like uh, membership plans. Yeah. So that's been a big question. Um, I sort of equate it to my iPhone. Like, you know, I use, you know, what, half a percent of what that thing can actually do. Yeah. Um, and I do feel like that a practice management system is so robust and maybe can do all of these things, but are you really utilizing it to, you know, provide insights and make business decisions and help you manage the business? Um, or are you just data entering and submitting claims, you know? Yeah. So, um, and I, I, the, the, the example I give all the time when I have seminars and things like that is the fact that, you know, my, my oldest son's name is Aaron and he's AA, R-O-N, and he gets butt dialed every single day because people <laughs> put his information in their phone as Aaron. So he's always the first person in the list. So he gets butt dialed every day and it's bad data management. If they had just put his name in, in as Aaron Sherdan, then he'd be under S and he wouldn't get butt dialed as much, but it's bad use of data. And it's the same yeah. thing when we don't put, you know, we put Charles into EagleSoft as Chuck 
then we can't find them. Then we create another version of Charles. It's the same thing. Bad data, you know, you know, garbage yeah. in, garbage out, and it's a it's yeah. a big problem. Yep. Um, so many of the people here who have registered, um, you know, our current clients that use EagleSoft and have a membership plan. Some maybe not. Just thinking about it. So as you think about how to help these uninsured patients, um, you know, who don't have insurance, but we want to help the practice manage these plans um, with or without a software, you know, would love you to just walk us through kind of, you know, your best practice for how to do this. Well, the, the, the best thing is, you know, first of all, the, the office has to decide how they want to manage the plan, how they want the plan to be structured. Uh, and I, you know, I've been, I've had a membership plan in an office that I've worked in, you know, since 1989, since I started working in an office and we did it because we were looking for honestly a, a path out of, uh, the seniors who ask for discounts. Honestly, that's how it started for us. Yeah. It was, we had seniors who expected a discount. So we said, how do we structure a discount program? but do it to our advantage. I mean, and that's really what it's all about. It's about managing our business. So we created a Costco program. I mean, we literally said, "Let this is what Costco is doing, which I'm gonna make you pay me for this piece of plastic, which means when you walk in with this piece of plastic, this credit card or membership card, I will give you a discount, but you're gonna follow a structure plan, a structure rules that I set up in the office. So a lot of it was building these programs so that I could use it that way. And then it turned into, how do I get people off of an AARP program? How do I get off, off of a plan where a patient is paying for it? Or God forbid, they they walk into a grocery store and they buy that program that's at the counter for dental plan that they pay for, but get no real benefit from. Yeah. So you know that's where it became my challenge to figure out how do I can get people to buy a plan that I sell instead of something that somebody else is selling and they're yeah. benefiting from something inside the office. So that's you know, really how I started creating these plans. On, on In that same vein, um, when we created ours in our practice, it was um, when the Affordable Care Act was implemented and employers changed their election, but the um, the residual benefit that we noticed was it streamlined all of our discounts. Exactly. The cash discount, the uninsured discount, the senior discount. And so even when I talk to clients today, I'm like, this is your opportunity to get rid of all of that kind of cherry picking and, you know, one offs here and there and friends and family versus seniors versus cash versus uninsured, you know, streamline it. You can join our plan and that's the way you access, you know, reduced rates or you can pay our fees. It's simple. And yeah. the, the beauty of this is as we see patient loyalty shifting, because patients will, you know, patients fly with the wind based on who will take their plan. Once you have a plan that's internal, you yeah. now have that control. Yeah. And you tend to see, you know, especially families of four, you know, mom has insurance, dad has insurance, and now they have to put the kids on the plan. And then that, that plan goes up exponentially. So this is a great way of saying, hey, before you consider adding the kids to an existing plan where you're paying for it, look at yeah. what the value is in our plan at X number of dollars. So yeah. I, I always look at it that way and it's it's so much better. I, yeah. I love the control in the office. Yeah. So, Obviously I'm a control freak. <laughs> I'm gonna call that organized. Um, okay. So, so we decide, let's say we decide as a practice, we've got our structure um, for, for the first scenario, let's just say it's an annual plan. We don't offer, um, you know, a monthly. Take me through how you would recommend I, you know, organize this and track it in EagleSoft. So the way I always st I start with what do we what do what do we want that fee to be? What do we want that membership fee to be? And what I tell office is if you're in network with say a Delta Dental, take what a comp exam plus FMX plus pro fee would be, and then what the recall visit would be. So I'm going to use round figures, 150 bucks from the first visit, and let's just call it $100 from the other visit. So now we're at 350 bucks. So if that's the case, let's make our plan 299. And I'm a big proponent of, let, you know, I want to go with what's on late night TV, how much do things cost? 1999. <laughs> exactly. So I'm always looking at numbers like that. So my plan is, let's just say 299. 
But I also yeah. want to make sure that I'm taking care of my patients who are going to come in for a third visit. So then I have a rider for my perio patients at another $149. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have plan A, it's $199, or I'm sorry, 299 and then an additional add-on plan, which would be the perio rider, would be that. And the way I always packaged it was, again, my marketing guy, I have a silver plan, I have a gold plan, and I have a platinum plan. Again, that's just my verbiage. My, you know, uh, my silver plan is for my seniors. And guess what I do with my seniors? I don't charge them anything for the plan, but they structure it with a discount. And it's a 5% discount, which is what the seniors are looking for. So I have a senior plan, which is a silver plan, but guess what? They'll never leave me. <laughs> then I have my- Because <laughs> they that, get the discount. Exactly. And they're on then the I have my, yeah, Then I have my gold plan, which is the traditional plan, and then my platinum plan, which is the perio plan, which adds more. And it just for me, it's an easier way to structure it and to talk to my patients about it, all right? But also built into my brochure that I give my patients are a couple of caveats. And one is if you go more than um, 30 days outside your six month recall cycle, you lose your plan. Yeah. Now I'm a hard ass about stuff like this, right? And then the other one is if you break more than three appointments, you lose your plan. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. if I can write this stuff in there, you know, it's almost like if, if people ever read their HIPAA agreement, they'd probably freak out, but nobody ever reads it. I, you know, I always say it's a great place to stick in a caveat that you get their kidney if they die, just in case you need <laughs> one, because nobody ever read it, you know, yeah. so just throw it in there. So well, I'm going to, I'm going to ask the question that I know people are thinking is, well, what if our schedule's too full to get that person in, in that month? <gasps> what do we do? Then you let them go and you just say, don't worry about it, Mrs. Jones. It's you we and we know how much you. we love you. Exactly. You're the hero. Exactly. Guess what? It's your plan. They're, it's your you're not plan. bound to anyone else's contract. You, you set the rules. Whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, that's why I love, I, I love being in control of it. It, you know, and everybody complains about insurance companies making up their own rules. Well, guess what? You can do it too. Yeah. All right. And it's not insurance. So you don't have to worry about the federal guidelines for this stuff that you do have to worry about state rules Some, but yeah. state rule yeah they're, but, they're reasonable they're not outrageous yeah. exactly you know and the state's a whole lot easier to deal with than the federal government so it's it's an easier way but the but then we can sit it put it into eaglesoft as this same structure we're all used to putting plans into eaglesoft as employers so why don't we structure it that same way and do you want me to share my screen so you guys can see kind yes of, let me that do would that be so let me share my screen all right and get, you get you can see my screen now. We can. So let me go to my front office and let's go to list, and you can see my employer. Don't worry about HIPAA problems, guys. These aren't real patients. This is a fictitious office with fictitious stuff in it. So don't worry about HIPAA issues. And you can see my crew membership plan, and I have my plan listed. And again, this is kind of my OCD. I have January, February, March, April. I only put these in here for the moment, but I also put the number in here. So keep them in order. alphabetical order. <laughs> exactly. Not alphabetical. I get you. Hey, by exactly. the way, everyone, um, this handout that um, Andre has put together has screenshots with all yep. of this. So yep. you don't have to be like taking pictures with your cell phone right now. We're going to make exactly. sure you get all of this. And everybody who knows or who's in the Ecosoft field guide, they know that this is exactly how I set up everything. I always make sure that everybody can see exactly how things are done. I'll give you as many screenshots as you need. But so let's just take my January plan. And the beauty of this also is because I have this plan set up with the date, I can also do some marketing opportunities where I can send out a reminder in December to all of the patients whose employer is my membership plan January. Yeah. So I can send basically recall cards that say, hey, you're due to pay me again in January when I do an annual plan. Even if I do a monthly plan, I still want to let them know that it renews. So I always have this set or, up with 12 employers. Go for it. Or your software will automatically notify your patient and charge them upon their renewal date. <laughs> exactly. And again, that's why I love plan like plan forward, because, you know, there are certain things that once we get to a volume of, you know, a tipping point, you yeah. can't manage this yourself and you want somebody else to manage it. And that's where I go. You need somebody who can partner with you, can do this for you. So yeah. I, I'm I'm a hundred percent behind the idea that if somebody else can do it for you, let it happen. But I want to make sure that this is set up so that I know who's getting those notifications. Yep. yep. Love that. So 
And you can see I've got my, my employer name. I've got my group number over there, which is my date. There's no deductible or max because there is no such thing in these plans. And then I, just because I'm anal, I make sure that all my percentages are set to zero, just for yep. the sake of it. All right. The other yep. thing I do is I create an insurance company. All right. That's based on this. Remember, we're not an insurance company. We're just using this to fool the system. So I'm setting up an insurance company with the same name. And because I'm a little crazy, I make sure my address is do not mail, just so nobody mistakenly wants to put this in an envelope and mail a claim into to someplace. So I always just put that in there. Yep. A great way to fool EagleSoft is if I put in here any insurance form, it could generate an in, a, a uh, I'm sorry a, a claim. But if you set this to none. What's going to happen is when you get to the screen to process a claim, you'll be able to actually open and close a claim. It will never really show up in the system, but it'll open and close a claim without actually printing something. And that happens from the preference here that says do not track a claim, right? It would automatically set it to patient responsible for all. But if you say do not track claim, when you get to the part where it asks you to submit a claim, you hit submit manually. It opens and closes. There's no record of a claim. There's no print off or anything like that, but it's just a way to fool the system. Right? Then the most important thing about these would be our fee schedule. And this is how we set up the fees that we're going to be charging our members. Okay. I'm going to show you how quickly to do it. And obviously I already have one in here, but I'm going to create a new one. If I go to a new fee schedule, I automatically set up my fees based on whatever discount you want to give. And typically, what do you guys see? 10%, 15%, what do you, what's the typical? Totally depends on the practice. Five, it literally ranges five yeah. to 20%, yeah. Exactly. So let's just say between five and 20, let's call it 15. Yep. And what will happen is we want to actually do this at 85% of our standard fees. And that will create a new fee schedule. Give it a name, all right? And because I already have one in here, I'm not going to make a whole new one. But then the next step is to go through your services and those things that are going to be of zero charge. So, you know, your exams including and your imaging plan. stuff. Yep. Including yep. the plan. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're zeroing those things out in this fee schedule. So can I ask a quick question? Go for it. When, um, when you use that percentage that's going to override everything, then you can manually go in and adjust any outlier. That's exactly what I would do. Okay. And it's also a good opportunity because you could do something, and, and this is again, marketing for me. I like to go through here and like, this says 42.50. I'd make this $42. I mean, you know, I, this is the opportunity to, to round the numbers up or down to make them look a little bit more like marketing, make this $49 yeah. if you want. So yeah. go here and there and do that. But you also might go into a something like you may have a special going on whitening and you may not want this to be part of the program. So here's a part, a part where you can go down to your whitening and change those fees to whatever you want it to be. All right. Yep. The price of gold is ridiculous. If you have a lot of patients who are getting gold facings, don't change that price, you know, make yeah. it something else. So just be aware yep. that this is the part where you can go in and tweak your fees to make them any way you want. All right. And I've already done that. So I won't make a new one, but here is my plan fee for all my services. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's my membership plans. I already have them in there. There's my yeah. fees for my membership plans. Mm -hmm. All right, that gets attached. And now you have your employer set up. So I'm gonna go to a patient, edit that patient. All right, and a couple things you're gonna see. So I've got my employer set up and he's on that membership plan. All right, don't worry about this max down here that just happened to be there from his old insurance all right but one important thing go into preferences make sure there is no fee schedule attached to the patient all right you should because if you have a fee schedule attached here it's going to override anything else all right so we don't want a fee schedule there so now i have my employer set up with my membership plan all right and now let's do a walkout and see what would happen if we charge this guy out for his initial visit. So in Andre world, of course, I already have my membership first visit set up as an exploding code. What if that varies? Well, it, it could. 
And again, what I would have is a, a, a million different choices here. So I could have a membership first visit adult, membership first visit child, membership first visit perio patient, et cetera. So I would have all these things set up as, and I do have this one. So this is a first visit with a perio upgrade. So this one's a first visit. There's my membership plan. There's my 149 for the, the uh, perio. There is the exam. There's the perio maintenance appointment. Those things got zeroed out based on my fee schedule. And the only thing the patient would be paying for today is the plan and the upgrade. So they, um, if they didn't do, is that a, could they post the services that were completed that day individually? Sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah, hold on. So and and again, because the fee schedule is attached. So let's just go back to, let's just do a D0150. So there's my comp exam, D0210 and a D110. There they are, but because I have the fee schedule set so that the fee is zero, there yeah. is no charge for those things. Yep. I saw it in the handout too. Um, it, it's showing here, but you haven't set it. It will, there is a checkbox to say, show your standard fee. Yes. So, so let's do this. So that the patient will see the full value and they'll see the reduced rate. Exactly. So yeah. let me, and I don't have this on this patient, but I'm just going to open up another patient so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go to Charles. So I have as a default that all my, all the time I show uh, the full fee and adjustment on all services. So let's just go to this guy's account and look at a, an old service. So that's what it would, would look like. You'd actually see the standard fee, the adjustment, and then the fee. So in a walkout for my patients, Here's a smart invoice. This is a receipt. The patient would always see your standard fee, what you adjust off, how much you charge. And obviously this person has insurance, but they're going to see the adjusted fee on their walkout, but they'll also see your normal fee in any yeah. transaction and also in any treatment plan. Yeah, that's but, absolutely something that we always recommend, regardless of how you're doing it, is make sure the patients know the full value of whatever you're doing that day. Yep. Um, cause you have, you want to reinforce that value. Yeah. And like I said, it, if the patient's in the, your plan, it will always show no matter what, oops, uh, in treatment plans, regardless. So you're always going to see that standard fee and adjustment, no matter where you are, walk out, um, or in a treatment plan, as long as, and let's show where that under preferences. All right under accounting, and this is in the handout, all right, you wanna display the standard fee and adjustment on walkout and treatment plan. So that's an important check, all right? And that will show not just for our membership plans, but any uh, fee schedule or coverage book dis, you know, difference that you have in your walkouts or treatment plans. So that's a global setting, essentially. Okay. Yep, yeah, it's, yeah not, it's not per employer, yes. We have a question, if Go that's okay. It. I want to throw it out at you. Um, Hillary asked, if you have zero fees, but pay your associate based on production, how would you account for crediting them the production for an exam? Okay. So this is going to be controversial, which is 90% of what I talk about. Um, I don't. Um, here's the thing. In that walkout, I did an exam. I did four, but I, let's just use your typical exam, FMX, profi, new patient visit. Uh, my doctors who do the exam aren't going to get production for that if I'm tracking production, all right? They are going to get production if the doctor recommended the membership plan. I would post the membership plan to the doctor. If the hygienist is the person who recommended the membership plan, they get production. That's the way I run my business. Now, you guys can do it any way you want, but remember, if I needed to show production for that, there is what's called the managed care utilization report. And that report, you know, let's just say for the year, I don't know what range I have in here for this report, but this does show the gross fees that were charged out for a period. So if you wanted to show production, even with a fee schedule or a coverage book or a membership plan, you could still show your standard fee here and then show what you'd charge under the plan. So up to the office, but my thing is, you know, this, the plan is a marketing opportunity to get the patient in. The doctor's not gonna get, okay, let's just say, a, a, typically we pay 
a provider 30% of production. So 30% of a $100 exam is $30. I mean, come on, let's, I'd rather get 30% of the implant case that's gonna happen in the future or 30% of the restorative work that's gonna happen in two weeks when the patient comes in. It's up to the doctors to come in and do an exam and find treatment for the patient to come in. Now, if the patient's a healthy 30 year old and there's nothing to be done, eh. but that's and kind I, of the way I do it. Um, we get this question all the time too, yeah. and it is controversial. It However, is. is there based, based on setting it up like this, can't you run a report on the employer to see how many um, patients under this employer have come in in a certain in a specific amount of time yeah. so you can see how many membership exams you've done per provider in a given period of time yeah. and so pay those out quarterly or i mean monthly if you want but you can run those reports and sure. pay them out yeah but remember there's no actual production happening so re what we're looking at is a report of report of production that would have happened and again yeah. managed care and you see it right there so there's my membership plan fee schedule and I can say for the month, yeah. how much do we do? Yep. And then since you are collecting money for those services, if if you want to pay the commission that the providers you know, are doing, because you are collecting, then you could just based on running monthly or quarterly or every six month reports. Yep. And you know, again, controversial, but I, I think it's ridiculous in a adjusted production world that doctors are making, uh, they're, they're being compensated on production. It's, it's, it's a yeah. nebulous <laughs> number. It, yeah. Because you, there is no real, like, this is the fee for everything. It's different exactly. no matter yeah. what patient walks in the door. Yeah. It should all it, it, it should always be compensation on collections Collection. or adjusted production. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, and that's why, you know, this, you can, you can do it either way you want, but there's a report either way. So the managed care utilization report will give you the gross numbers, but those numbers actually don't show up in Eagles off, you know, so, but good question. Also with membership plans, since the, the, the plan is zero production and I guess all collections, um, you could report over the same time on your membership collections and pay percentages according to the actual collections. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the one of the methods I, I have a couple of offices doing this is they're actually doing their membership plans. Um, so they're actually posting their membership plans to a fictitious provider. So I just have my temp hygienist, but they actually have sort of a slush fund. Yeah, that they're posting this to, and then they pool that money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can look at the report and say how many patients came in and saw Dr. Smith. Well, you get X percentage of that pool or whatever. So, because fifty patients out of the hundred saw Dr. Smith, so doctor gets fifty percent of the pool. Exactly. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. And again, the managed care utilization report. You could do the same thing by saying, okay, here's all the exams that Dr. Smith did. Here we go, and here's all the that Dr. Jones get. So, okay. gave me an idea to ask um, about a worksheet in Excel for something like that later. Exactly, and and here's here's my thing. You know, again, this is a practice management software. It should manage the practice. If you're having to use, if you have to go back to QuickBooks or an Excel spreadsheet or any other data tool, then your practice management software is not doing what it's supposed to do. So you should be able to look at this report, do everything you need to do from that report. And you know, I've, I've managed practices from two operatories to 26 operatories. And it's so much easier when it's just run one report, read the report, pay on that report. Simple. That was the managed care utilization report? Okay. Yep. And that's for any fee schedule or coverage book. And because we're using a fee schedule, fee schedule. when we do that, that's the way it works. So, and I'll bring it back up. Managed care utilization report. Beautiful. And like I said, it's this is an easy peasy one because you can just pick your membership plan because that's the fee schedule and pick your date range you want. And you'll be able to get that report of gross production, standard fee, and then adjusted production, 
what you actually charge your patients in the end. Yep. Perfect. That's a good question. Yep. Let's see. Was there so, a, there's a question? Yeah, I oh, just I wanted to make sure. Yeah. And one other tip, once you guys get your membership plan set up, once you have an, in, an insurance company for your membership plan, I'm going to show you a real cool trick. So typically, and I actually, I just talked to an office this morning about this. And what they said was, um, what we do is when we create the, our membership plans, we actually have a patient alert that says that they're in our membership plan. So what they did was, let me go back to my front office. They did list general setup and they did a patient alert, new alert, and they called it a care membership plan. Um, I don't want to interrupt your no, flow of the posting and walkout. So whenever yeah. you're done with that process. Okay. So anyway, they created this uh, alert where they popped up and they had an indicator that showed on the schedule. So this dollar sign showed up on the schedule. And I went, well, that's great, but now you've got to add this on for every single patient who's a member of your plan. And that's what they've been doing. So we looked through their schedule to kind of find some patients who had the icon and we missed a couple patients who actually were in the plan because somebody forgot to put the alert on. So I said, let's do this. What if we created an IntelliCare? And you're gonna to have to call support to get this done, Patterson Technology Center support. And let's just do the same thing, membership plan. And we're gonna do a custom IntelliCare. And again, the PTC is gonna to have to do this for you, but they can actually write a code that says, this is not what the code is. I'm just writing this in here. If member and icon, it's not what the code is gonna look like. All right, but they're gonna actually create this special code that goes here that will automatically put an icon on the schedule if they're a member of your plan. So you don't have to think about that. It just automatically shows up if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that. So if they're a member of your plan, then they automatically show up in your schedule. And let me open up my schedule with an icon. It goes down the side here. So there's my patients who have Blue Shield. There's my patients who have MetLife. There's my patients who, oh, there's another. So automatically I could show whatever our icon is for our membership plan right on my schedule. That's great. Um, when we were doing this in the practice through Eaglesoft, we also had an IntelliCare on the schedule so we could do it at a quick glance. And when you are using a software, how we recommend using the software is like your online eligibility checker. So every, you know, the week before, the day before, when you're, you know, kind of looking through and prepping maybe for your morning huddle or the, the next day, use that to jump into the software and look at the five people coming in to make sure that they're active, that all their pay, bills are paid, that their, you know, account is in good standing so that you know they're eligible for the services. Um, exactly. In, yep. Included in the plan. And I do see Elizabeth's uh, question that's in the chat and it says, what version of Eaglesoft have in telecares all versions? So as long as you're on a modern version, you have in telecare. Um, it's been there since version nine, I think. Uh, but if you're not on one of the current versions, meaning 2021, um, you're way behind the curve and you need to upgrade. So uh, you need to be on 19, 20, 21, uh, 19 at the, at, the, at the back end of things. All right. So currently, yeah, currently on 19. All right. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you have IntelliCare and it is list and IntelliCare. It's been there forever, but very few people use it. I, sh I shouldn't say that. Before the field guide came out, very few people use it. Now a whole lot of people use it. Uh, but one thing I, I always tell offices about this, um, it is probably the only thing in Eaglesoft that comes with a red warning right in the software that says using IntelliCare indicators may impact overall on schedule performance. It's about the only red <laughs> warning there. All right. So just so you know, um, if you have too many IntelliCares, it can slow your system down. Now I have uh, a couple hundred 
in my system and it does not impact my system at all. You can see I have, that's my list of IntelliCare, I think I have a hundred or something. Um, and I don't see any impact on my schedule and in the offices that I have put these in, uh, but you have to be very careful with them. It can slow them down. So just so you know, if they're not, especially if they're not written properly. Um, I actually just kind of jotted down a question because IntelliCare was something that we all talked about. I mean, I worked in an IntelliCare happy practice. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you get a little bit numb to yep. some of the things that are up there. So do you have any recommendations or do's and don'ts on using IntelliCare? Like what are some of the ones that you definitely recommend using? And maybe um, it, it, it all depends on the practice. But uh, my thing is I use... Uh, very simplistic things to mean bigger picture things. So I'll give you an example. My red VIP that you see on my schedule there, that lets me know that the patient has a balance over X number of dollars and it's been X period of time since they made a payment. All right, so that's a really important one. And remember, I have IntelliCares for scheduling, again, that would show here, and then IntelliCares that would show in the clinical screen. Mm -hmm. So that's an important one for me. Um, some of the ones that are on here are just samples, but insurance, if it's important for you, yes, it should. Like the membership plan, knowing that person's a member, having something where you know that the insurance, you know, you may require jumping through hoops for a particular insurance. So yeah, you might want that on there. Um, I don't um, I do not do a lot of them, uh, but insurance classification is good. This brown TX lets me know that the patient has outstanding referred services that they haven't completed. Good idea. So, I, you know, and here's here's my the way I think about IntelliCares. If if the clinical department is asking me questions, or um, if my doctor is asking me questions about somebody, I can see it here, and I, I don't need to read anything. So, if my doctor comes up to me, and I'm I'm sure you've heard this. Um, hey, did so and so go to the orthodontist and have that work done? Did so and so get that root canal done? Hey, did they get their wisdom teeth out? I can immediately look at Tim and go, there's a referred service that he never got done. So is that a all... manual thing you remove once you get the stuff from the... No. no. So what, okay. what happens is in, and again, if the person is using charting properly, so this kid has got referred third molar extractions to be done. Once we get the notification back that they're done, they would go in and edit the extractions, mark them as existing, Wait and it would remove those from yeah. the system. Yeah. Okay. The one that was so helpful for me when I was at the front desk was pre-med. Pre-med, yep. Um, it was the little pill on the schedule. And so you, you could be sure that you, um, you know, that we made sure that that happened or got authorization or whatever needed to happen. Yeah. Um, and pre-med is, is one of those things that's built into the patient preferences, but the office we, I worked in, we worked on a lot of special needs patients. Um, we had a lot of patients who pre-med for th with things like um, Halcyon or Valium, those kind of things. So we had two different types of pre-med. We had a pre-med, which was the standard pre-med, and then we had a pre-med Halcyon, pre-med, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. So, you know, and again, scheduling is one thing. I can quickly look and see this person hasn't had an FMX in more than 60 months. They haven't had bite wings in more than 12 months. So my hygienists, they automatically know instead of doing this whole list of patients to go through and review who needs x-rays, I hate that word, yeah. but I can automatically see on my schedule who needs what. So, so that's kind of how, I, those are the kind of the basic things. But like I said, I've got a million different IntelliCares and you can see I me mean, COVID screening. <laughs> Have they done their COVID screening? Obviously, I'm not using this anymore, but some offices might want it. So yeah. I can quickly look at this and, and be able to tell a lot about a patient. Uh, the top ones on my list are ones that are automatically easy to put in from uh, by a user, and then the rest of them are custom written based on the needs of the practice. Yeah. So even like that, Gmail user, I can tell if there's somebody that I need to ask if I can get a review. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. <laughs> Liz says she's mind blown. <laughs> she's so excited. <laughs> yeah. Liz, you're about to be so organized. <laughs> well, how, well, here's a good one for you. You see that little black bird? That lets me know this person's a snowbird. So I'm in the Northeast. 
So I know this person isn't on a six month recall. They're on a 12 month recall. They're not going to make a six month appointment in the middle of the winter. So I know immediately what's going on with these patients. So all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. I even have where I am, um, the next state down Delaware, we do a lot of uh, Medicaid and Medicaid covers up to age 18. So that red M lets me know that the person aged out. So it's blue Uh until they turn 18 and then they automatically turn red at 18. So those people who are used to doing Medicaid uh, eligibility, I can see the kid aged out. Yeah. So whatever, but IntelliCare is a fantastic tool. And like I said, it's, it's really good for our membership programs to be able to see that that person's on our membership program. Yep. Um, okay, let's see. We have about 15 minutes left. Anything else on the kind of the membership flow before we um, maybe turn to some other things? Yeah, well, and again, the, one of the things with membership flow is making that fee schedule something that you really, and remember if you create this, your membership program and you create a fee schedule, a lot of people this year did fee increases. So make sure you're going back and recreating your fee schedule for your membership plan. Don't try to go through here and update the fees. Just create a whole new fee schedule based on your new fees at 85% or whatever you want. So remember, if you do a fee increase, you're going to have to increase your membership fee schedule. So just be really clear about that one. But like I said, I always like to go through here and tweak my fees to make sure that they fit into, again, a marketing kind of guideline, you know, find out uh, what do you want to make your, your, you know, your, your fees, round the numbers up, make them a little more attractive. Uh, But it's, it's a great tool to be able to do that. The other thing is if your plan only covers two cleanings a year, really important. I have, and I'll show you. Let me go to my, my service codes. I actually have a service code for, well, it's going to be on a D110, for an additional cleaning per year. Mm-hmm. So I actually have an internal code that I can use so that I don't use the normal uh, ADA code. I use this code if somebody wants to get a third cleaning in a year, because I don't want that to come up with a zero fee. Yeah. If only two um, are included. Would you do the same thing with? Some of our clients, their perio plan includes the three perio maintenances. Yep. The fourth perio maintenance is offered at potentially a reduced rate. Same way. Yep. Anytime there's anything that's extra and above what's going to be part of the plan, I always want to make sure that there's extra coding in here for that. Yeah. Yep. yep. And obviously, I can still use this additional cleaning for anybody. It doesn't just have to be for a membership plan. So I can. But as long as in when you set up your fee schedule, you don't make this a zero charge because this one is one that's going to be charged out. Charged, yeah. Um, question on, you know, we talked about yearlies. How do you recommend doing monthlies? So monthlies, I don't do anything, anything different. There's nothing different about how I set up a monthly plan. I would still be posting my $2.99 into the account. All right. So let me just go back to Hank. What I would be doing, and this, again, this is Andre doing this, and I'm going to be putting my membership plan in, all right? And I I might have one called membership plan uh, uh, monthly, but I'm still going to post the same amount, but I'm going to go into the patient's preferences, the account preferences, and I'm going to suppress them getting a statement. But each month, as I get a payment, they're going to be chipping away at that $299. So I'm going to carry this balance because as far as I'm concerned, they bought the plan and it's, it's going to be on their account. All right. And they're going to be slowly chipping away at that number until they pay off the plan. And again, they're going to get monthly reports from plan forward. So I know that a payment has come in for this. It's been cleared. Their, mem- their credit card's been paid and I'm going to post it to Eagles off as it chips away. That's how I track. So uh, what if they have a balance for like a crown? That's okay. It, because if they have a balance for a crown, we can, you know, in my account payment, I can designate by line item where I'm going to post some money. But um, sending the statement if it's suppressed. Oh, well, then I wouldn't suppress a statement. But, okay. you know, and so again, yeah, Andre World, I, I don't care that they're getting a statement and it says that they owe me $299 less than $39 that they've already paid me and now they owe me $264. 
I'm fine with that. Plus the balance from the crown. Okay. They're going to know that, but it's okay. to me, it's, it's a balance that they owe me. So yep. um, but, I was going to say see. there are definitely multiple ways to do that. That is a, a fantastic one with an Eagle soft. Yeah. Um, so if you have more questions or um, want to reach out to us and, and ask us um, how you might be doing it, would love, would love to know that. Oh, and Elizabeth just said, could you do it as a payment plan? Yes, you could. You could set it up as a payment plan. Um, that would be a really easy way to do it so that you could have it go in and then 12 installments that automatically went back through the account. That's a great way of saying it. Somebody put something in, in the Q&A. Our membership plan gives a 15% off restorative for cash credit and 10% if using care credit or other outside financing. How would we set up a fee schedule for that? Uh, you'd have two, two different fee schedules and 24 employers because <laughs> you'd have to set up those employers attached to those fee schedules. So, and I, and again, I, I, again, Andre world, I don't understand that. And I, I refuse to accept that idea. You know, if I went to the gas station, it's one price for credit card, one price for cash, I wouldn't go there. So, <laughs> you know, I, that, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's up to the office to decide how you want to structure it. Again, you are the federal government when it comes to this stuff. You can decide how you want to do it. But, you know, if you have a fee schedule for cash as opposed to care credit, I, I have care credit. What if I come in today and I want to pay my, my crown with care credit, but I want to pay for my recall visit mm -hmm. as cash? How do you do that? The way I was going to say, the way we always did it, um, because care credit is so expensive sometimes to the merchant, it's too deep of a discount for the provider to offer the 15% plus accept care credit. Yeah. It's just, it, they can't do both. Yeah. So as opposed to saying, no, we don't accept care credit at all. It's like, sure, we'll take care credit so you can finance this and pay, you know, over a number of months for your convenience. We just can't afford to do both. Exactly. So, um, and then similarly, maybe there's not enough margin to accept care credit for the preventive care of the membership plan. And, and I have never, yeah, it, and you know, in my bio, you it said I speak for care credit, but I, I, I'm a, I have never used care credit where my office pays the financing. I'm not okay. taking a hit. I will only do the plans where the patient pays the financing on it. So that's my opinion. That's what I would do. And I have thousands and thousands and thousands of patients who've used care credit, but yeah. they pay for the financing on it. The office is not. So I don't take the hit on it. <laughs> so. Got, you know what? This is amazing. I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, sure. So as long as you don't do those no interest plans, whatever, that the patients never take advantage of anyway, they're not going to pay it off in six months and not have interest. They're going to go to the, and they're going to hit, get hit with the interest anyway. So let them do it. So interesting. That's just kind of my approach. We had a ton of patients that did, but I think it was because it was pretty competitive, but we yeah. paid, the office paid, what, 12, 15% to allow yep. them to pay over 12 months and not pay interest on it. Yep. Go to the other finance options. That's, yep. that's my answer. Yep. I hear you. Yep. Um, any other tips, tricks? Um, let's see. What are your top three most frequently asked questions? Uh, top three is typically, you know, what's the most, the, the number one question I get is what is the most under, underutilized piece of EagleSoft? I have that like literally next. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the number one question I get. And it honestly, it's the chart. The chart is the most underutilized piece of the software. Um, and then Tell us the number, more about that. well, you know, for me, people use EagleSoft the way that we drove in the 1980s, which is you printed a piece of paper, MapQuest, and it was on the seat next to you. And you had to keep looking at that piece of paper in order to drive your car. Now we have the GPS in front of us on our phone, and it's yelling at us that there's a cop coming along the road ahead of you because we have ways or we have my, all right. Yeah. So now we have the information available to us, but we're still dependent on that piece of paper to guide us. So my chart looks a lot different than other people's charts because for one, I don't use what I used in school with a blue and red pencil. 
my colors tell me a story. All right. So it's not muddy. I see everything very clearly. I can see what the patient had, what they need to have, where we're going next, what, you know, what's going on. Um, I can also see subtleties, amalgam versus composite, that kind of stuff. You know, not that we can't open the patient's mouth and still see it, but I yeah. want to see it in my charting. So I think it's the most underutilized tool. And when we look at things like, let me pull up a patient that actually has it, you know, uh, patient offices who put things in into smart doc, it doesn't make my doc smart. So if I click on that tooth, I can see there's the implant label, there's the implant bottle, there is the cone beam slice, there's the letter from the specialist who placed it. So I don't need to go a bunch of places. Again, my GPS is in front of me, just like you're looking at here. I have got all of my IntelliCares sitting down here, and it's kind of messed up because we're on Zoom. But I can yeah. see everything I need to know about a patient from here, from here, and not have to leave this screen. And yeah. to me, this, I, I call it GPS charting. I want to see it right here instead of in 12 different places. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest complaint I hear about software, practice manager software is I've got to look 12 different places for things. And the answer to that is because you put it in 12 different places. <laughs> It needs to be in one place, accessible, quick, and easy, so that when your doctor says, hey, did so-and-so have the root canal done, you should be able to look at the chart and go, well, there's the root canal, and here is, and I don't have it on here, but here's the letter from the specialist where we got it, and can they have a cleaning? Well, here's the insurance information, and it tells you right there how often they can have a profi. You should not be going 12 different places to find that information, so really simple. Are they um, on our membership plan? There should be an icon down there, right? <laughs> yeah, amen. Um, what about, this is a data point that we ask people a lot when they're evaluating a membership plan, and it's, can you find hygiene retention for just uninsured patients? What's your yes. hygiene retention rate? How so do you do that? I would go, and it's got to be at the front desk. I got, Money Finder is my tool for 99% of all the practice management stuff that I do. So activities, okay. practice management, and money finder. And what you can do is I can say, show me patients who are unscheduled, all right, who are uninsured with no insurance. Yep. All right. And then I can do, I mean, if I wanted to, I could drill down and say, show me just for based on they had to complete it and use the hygiene codes. So profis and peri maintenance. All right. So if I go through here and just do 1110. And then I can also include, say, or 1120, 4910, 4341, and give a date range. I can look at and see how many people did we see who are no longer scheduled? Can so we saw 100 people. How many times you've um, seen them for preventive care in that time frame? Uh, you could. You could. Well, no, because they're only going to be listed once for everything they had. But you could say, you could just do a six month period because the assumption is that they, they're going to come in twice in a year. Oh you are going to have to extrapolate so some of the data. Okay. So yeah. they could extract every six months for the last 18 to 24 months. Yep. And then you could just do the analysis that way. Exactly. I, and I tell offices all the time, you know, I tend to go into offices and, and ask the question, how many patients did you see today who are no longer scheduled? And they always say, oh, we schedule all of our patients. And I go, okay, let's do this. Let's say, show me anybody who's not scheduled, who had any completed service, any completed service yesterday, put yesterday's date in there. And they're going to say, oh yeah. And then this is what you hear. You're going to start to see people's butts. <laughs> Yeah. Right? And it's always, oh yeah, but they don't have their schedule with it, but they have to find out from tra paratransit how they can get here. Oh, but they have to, the butts don't mean anything. If you told me immediately that all of your patients are scheduled when they leave the office, but mm -hmm. dot, dot, mm -hmm. dot. So yeah. this is a great way to be able to look at that and monitor it on a regular basis. Perfect. Yep. We are right at the top of the hour. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, Andre, um, can you stop share just so I can share sure. one last thing here? Um, Go for it. I, I obviously want to share your contact information. Where am I here? Um, here we go. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone so much for joining us. Um, Andre, thank you for all of this amazing information. He is so um, accessible and responsive, especially in that Facebook group. 
Um, so definitely check out that Facebook group, help him reach 100 members um, here in this next year. And um, his website, thecrewprocess.com, and there's his phone number right there. Um, also, here are our upcoming scheduled webinar events. Um, so please check those out. Um, if you have any interest in registering for them, shoot us a note. We don't have the registration link on here, um, but they will be available in the follow-up email um, when you get the recording. So uh, Andre, thank you again. This was so incredibly helpful and we just appreciate your generosity and giving all of your knowledge uh, to this community. So thank you. Happy to help.